devastating download. Podcast download complete. It's the Super Pow Her Podcast. Dear Direct, Direct. the Fly and Fab Go To Girlfriend is all about bringing you interviews with celebrities, information, and her super friends. An inspiration that takes your life to the next level. Dear Direct gets real. She doesn't just interview, she goes in. Dear Direct makes a difference with Super Pow Her. Hey y'all, it's Dear Direct, and welcome to the Super Pow Her Podcast podcast where fly women of power testify and that's what we are doing today I can't wait to tell you about today's show but before I do I decided you know what you guys have been so faithful Um, and I really just want to acknowledge the fact that you are tuning in on the show so we're gonna start doing a little segment where we acknowledge some of our listeners and viewers okay so today we have a um, a review from subscriber what is your name oh fashion fix mama you have no idea how apropos that is today <laughs> uh, fa- fashion fix mama says a breath of fresh air I love this podcast it's real relatable and there is a level of transparency from Dia and her guests that make me feel like I'm not alone because you're not girl in short um, I'll say that it's, it is short and sweet and offers great tips to live your best life and tap into your superpower. Thank you, girl. I appreciate that. Um, and so, listen, if you have a comment after you see it, please go on YouTube, go on iTunes, and everywhere where podcasts are, that's where we are. Give us a comment. We'll, we may read it on the, uh, on the podcast. You never know. But we certainly like to hear from you, and we want to know what you want to talk about. And speaking of which, mm, let me just tell y'all, I've been stalking this woman. (laughs) My guest is none other than Miss Pat Smith. She is a wife, a mother, a minister, an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, uh, an author, a fashion designer, um, a former beauty queen. But you know what, more than anything, she's a child of God and she's a real woman. And she did not come to play today. So not only am I welcoming you to the show, but welcome to today's show, which is the beauty of transparency. Hey, Pat. Oh, man. Girl, I'm so proud of you. I'm like watching you like, <laughs> like you're so good. No, I love what you're doing. I really do. It's needed. Thank you. We need it. We need it. Why, tell it's me why minute. you say that. Well, I'm a woman, mm-hmm. right? And I love to be able to connect with people who are real women not facades, not um, people who pretend, because that's that's uninspiring Mm. to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First of all, it's frustrating. Because when people seem like they have it all together, it makes you feel like a real failure, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But when I see women who are real that I've seen um, be impactful or successful, are beautiful inside and out, and then they still share Mm. their flaws, their vulnerabilities, um, their issues, their stuff, it, it, that inspires me. It lets me know that, okay, I'm human. Mm-hmm. I can still be impactful. Mm-hmm. I can still be significant. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it doesn't take away from my humanity. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for saying that, first mm-hmm. of all. Um, that's actually why I started the podcast. In some ways, mm-hmm. it was selfish. Mm. And because as you transition in life, you know, often you have these things that you're proud of or that you know people know you from you know right. um, and and then there's social media um, and so you when you start thinking about maybe where you are or where you're not mm-hmm. and you are looking at people's curated posts um, even uh, statistics and psychologists have shown how social media for all of its benefits mm-hmm. which I love a little addicted I do love it <laughs> right. um, but uh, mentally and emotionally and spiritually mm-hmm. It has depleted a lot of people, Mm -hmm. and people are making, uh, in some cases, um, life-changing decisions on things that are not even real or true, or it's not true or real all the time. Exactly. And so because I've been in and out, up and down, you know that even, sometimes even in the middle of success, Mm -hmm. there's tragedy. There's Always. pain, mm-hmm. or right before your breakthrough, yes. it looks really, really bleak. Mm-hmm. But people don't know that, mm-hmm. and so for women like yourself, I, I wanted to create an atmosphere 
wh who for for those who were willing to be transparent right. and testify and say, listen, me too. Yes. Uh, me too. In more than one way. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is what you don't know. And so, and here are the steps that I took to push through mm -hmm. when I didn't know how I was going to do it and when the fire of life hit me and I didn't think I could make it. That's so right. don't get it twisted. Before I put on this makeup, I might have been under the bed somewhere crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I was this morning, literally. Before I put on the makeup and the wig. See. And the lashes. But, okay, so you were a pageant girl, so let's just start from there. Yes. Right? Because um, I, was, I was in the black system. I was in the Miss Black USA pageant. You were in... I didn't know that. Yeah, I was, wow. I was Miss, black US, Miss Black Connecticut and Miss Black USA. You did not tell me that. We're pageant I was, sisters. Yes. Oh, my god. But gosh. I really was not a pageant girl. Right. I just needed the money. Okay. And I was a theater major and it was a platform and I had some things that I wanted to share mm -hmm. um, from my heart. Right. But I don't necessarily feel like I learned like all the prim and proper ways of being a pageant girl because I wasn't, in the, did, I the wasn't in the same system. You know but, what I mean? But thank God you did. So, 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 <laughs> so, right. So, so you were though, you were, yeah. you were very much a, a part of uh, mainstream mm. and the whole concept is to put your best foot forward all the time. Yeah. And, you know, for those who are just not even on any social media, maybe you haven't seen Pat lately, we'll talk about it. Mm. But you've been just the opposite. Like you, you still carry yourself as mm. great and beautiful and polished, Absolutely. but you have really begun to share a different part of yourself. So how do you go from being this pageant girl and all these rules mm -hmm. on how to do it right and now it's like you're breaking all the rules. Girl, it's, you know what? It took a lot of deprogramming. I bet. To be honest with you. And a lot of brokenness, hurt, disappointments. Um, God just kind of threw me into the deep end because you're absolutely right. I grew up a little different than you were. I grew up as a little girl in Virginia watching pageants. Mm -hmm. um, but in Virginia, we had never had a black Miss Virginia before. Yeah. So. It wasn't until I saw Vanessa Williams win Miss America did I think, oh. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah. And, um, but I would still try. Like I was that little, like 12, 13 year old girl in the pageant doing the craziest little cheerleading routines for talent mm -hmm. with my little cheer outfit on and wearing my choir gown to an evening gown competition. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, I was pretty <laughs> jacked up. I really was, right? Hey, wait, you said your choir, your girl, choir robe gown? No, no, what? girl. When we were, well, in middle school and high school, we didn't have, you know, for our choirs, we wore gowns, not robes. This is really? at school. Mm -hmm. At school, absolutely. Western Branch High School, Chesapeake, Virginia. Okay. We wore gowns if you were in the ensemble. So I wore that gown to compete in a pageant. Wow. I took a cheerleading routine. For, I was a cheerleader. So I took, I said, okay, start the music. Because back then, you know, we just had little recorders mm -hmm. or the boom boxes. Mm -hmm. I said, start the recorder, push play. Not even choreographed. I danced for like a minute and a half. And then when I hit my pose, I told him to stop. Like, that's how unprogrammed I was. Right. My, you know, my, my mother and father, they weren't exposed to pageants. Mm -hmm. And um, when I told my mom, she was like, where is this coming from? But it was a little girl in my class mm -hmm. that did all these pageants. Mm -hmm. And she was, Kendall Croft was her name, but she was um, well-groomed. Yeah. You could tell her family really supported her. She mm -hmm. had been in the system and she would come to school like with her crowns and her, you know, we, I just won this this weekend. Yeah. Oh, I just won another one this weekend. And so I asked her, how do I do it? And she told me, and I begged my mother to let me do it. So I went from this, um, yeah, I was very raw at first, but then once you get in the system, yeah. you're trained for the system. However, I was never quite what they were looking for. Hmm. Meaning that, well, you need to lose like five more pounds and trim down your hips. Um, we need to change your hair. Can you do something different with your hair? It was always something. So mm. I never would win. I'd be like third runner up, second runner up, fourth runner up, but I, I wouldn't win mm. in Virginia. And so it wasn't until, um, it was actually in 93 when my mother passed away. I How old were you when your mom passed? I was 22. So she had been really on this journey with me from what are you doing to really getting into mm -hmm. it, pushing me. Um, That's my baby. That's my baby. And girl, <laughs> don't let me lose. Like the times I lost, it was like, did she oh, pitch they fit? Oh, they were. She was like, they oh, hate. they cheated. Yeah. They cheated. Oh, mm -hmm. this is. Oh, this is racist. racist. Yeah, <laughs> this is racist. After, in Virginia, that's not you. You know, I don't want to stereotype. I'm just saying. No, but no. Back then, I mean, mm -hmm. that's that was her initial thought mm -hmm. at times. Well, you know, why 
why isn't she going further? Right. Um, but I think there was a stereotypical look yeah. that was very prevalent mm -hmm. in Virginia at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I, I didn't meet it. So I, of course, um, 92, she passed in June. My sister convinced me to try one more time. Mm. The pageant was bought out Pam. by Pam. Yeah, my sister Pam. The pageant was bought out by someone else, and she said, Pat, I think you should do it one more time. Yeah. And at the time, I just felt like, I can't do this without my yeah. mom. I can't, I just can't be told no one more oh, time or reject man. it another time. Mm. I was working for Governor um, Doug Wilder at the time out of college. Loved my job, but I knew there was more. But my sister said, try it one more time. So in October, I tried. And, and I won. I became the first African American Miss Virginia that year. I love it. With curvy hips, and um, it worked. I love yeah. it. We have so much in common. You know, my first job after Howard was um, I worked for Senator Chris Dodd. Did you? I sure did. Girl, we have a lot in common, I like pageants. Know. Now we worked in politics. Yes, I worked wow. in politics for years. Mm. And um, real quick story mm. is um, I I. When I graduated, I was engaged, uh, so I've been married before. Mm -hmm. Oh, me too. Right? <laughs> we'll talk about it. We, we got, got a lot child. of me too. <laughs> yes. And so, you know, naturally, so my classmates were people like Taraji Henson and Marlon Wayans and Eric Wilberson. Taraji. Oh my God, theater class in, with Bill Duke in L.A. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, class. so we um, we were class, we were all in the theater department, mm -hmm. and so you know, the next move after we graduated, of course, was to either go to L.A. or New York, mm -hmm. and. I was in this relationship, I was very involved in my church, mm -hmm. and my ex-husband was like, hey, you know, we can move to L.A. Um, once you get a job. But you know, it don't work like that. Oh no, you gotta At step all. out, you just gotta you have jump. To, exactly, you have to which, jump. which Taraji did do. Yes. Um, so, what happened though is, so I had this job after my internship. I basically didn't realize it, but in hindsight I realized I got depressed. Mm because I didn't have the courage to choose myself. It's the Super Power Her Podcast. We'll have more right after this. Well-being trust is working to eliminate stigma of mental illness and ease access to care. Share your mental health journey. You are not alone. And tag at well-being underscore trust. Hashtag be there and hashtag be heard. Real talking tools to reboot, realign, and reignite fire in your life. It's Super Power Her with Dia Direct. So I wasn't sure if I was good enough. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I think I tried to make him pay for it in the sense that I expected him to make me happy, which he wasn't capable of doing. Mm -hmm. We were in our 20s, first of all. I had just graduated. Mm -hmm. um, and the truth is... Um, that's actually what my first book was about, which is called Touch, Your, Touch Yourself. Because mm -hmm. um, nobody really is capable of making you okay. Oh, they can't no. do it. No. And everybody's trying to figure out their own life. But in yes. my case, um, it took me taking pills. Mm. And Damn. it was the thought, and I'm an only child. Okay, okay. But it was the thought of a being a believer, which you could have never told me mm -hmm. that I would even go there. Of course. Um, and, but because I'm an only child, I thought about my mom and the pain of her pain mm -hmm. kept me alive wow. to put some en enough back just to make me sick. Mm. But I just, I share that to say that like, I'm so affirmed mm. by your ability mm. to also share your truth. Yeah. And sometimes when you do it, you feel so naked mm. and what people don't know, you know, because in, in, in a lot of ways it's, it is, it's ministry when you testify and you share your yeah. stuff, but it takes so much out of you. Mm -hmm. And talk about, you know, so you, so you went through this pageant system, um, you went to LA. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, that was um, my, that was my leap. Mm -hmm. That was the leap. Yeah. So you did go. I did go, yeah. However, um, where we connect again is that I had a choice between New York and LA because mm -hmm. you know that's kind of you have yep. to go one or the other. Yep. And so after Miss USA, I did not win Miss USA. Mm -hmm. I was first runner up, mm -hmm. which was was crushing for me because I lost my mom in June. This was that thing that, like I said, as a little girl, I watched. 
So I was always like looking at Miss America, Miss USA, you know, praying and hoping that one day I would, I could win it. Choose me. Choose me. Mm. Mm. And that that would be the thing to then validate, validate me and put me on, you know, put me on for what I really wanted mm -hmm. to do, what, which was I had a, a little secret dream of being mm -hmm. an actress mm -hmm. that I was too scared to show mm -hmm. like and share in Chesapeake, Virginia, mm -hmm. but also that I wanted to host a show. Yep. And I thought, wow, this will be, this could be my way out of Chesapeake, out of Virginia to bam, a national platform. Yep. Um, I invested way too much in it. Mm -hmm. And so when I didn't win, I was first runner up, which I tell people is like second loser, mm. really. It feels awful. It's like going to the Super Bowl and people think that's amazing, but you don't win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, it's all about the winner. It's not about the, the team they play, right? And so that day, that night, um, when I lost, it was, um, it was crushing yeah. for me. When I went, I had to go back to Virginia, back home. I had left my job at the governor's office. I bet everybody had the same question. What was that? I'm asking, like, you know, when you had to see people and they oh, knew, yeah. like, oh, yeah. That had to be hard. Well, it was a lot of, you know, not a lot of questions, more, you were robbed. Mm. You should have won. That you helps know? a little bit. No, it hurt. No. Yeah, because it's one thing if you, if you truly get beaten, like, you just clearly get right. beaten, yeah. right? Somebody's just that much better. But, um, and in sports, you can kind of. But when someone else is making opinions about you, yeah. it's subjective. For, there you go. For two hours, you got about five or six people that are just making up, up. You know, this is what we. This is our judgment, right? It's just this one period of time. Another night, another set of judges could have determined a whole other outcome. Yep. You don't see it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, in that moment, they they determined everything for me. Mm. I put too much value Which into is their so decisions. Dangerous. Just talk about that for a second. It's really dangerous. Just in terms of when you have hopes and dreams for yourself, mm -hmm. and you expect other people. Or you put that that in somebody else's hands, even mm -hmm. if it's just a job. Like you're everything. everything. That's a lot of power to give people, and it's like yes. if they don't say yes, then you're a failure. You feel like you're a failure, and that's what I've learned now, 25 years later. It's a journey. Is but it was a journey. It was that there were five or six people making a decision within a two-hour time frame. They made a choice. But that should have never impacted the next 20 years of my life. And it did? Oh, my God, yeah. How? In that, okay, so I didn't win. Mm -hmm. um, I had to decide between New York and L.A. I had dated um, my ex-husband off and on between, you know. Martin Virgin Lawrence. Yeah, Martin Lawrence, between mm -hmm. Virginia and L.A. for about three years. And I remember telling Martin, okay, I'm thinking about coming to L.A. What do you think? And as a woman, you're hoping that this guy you really are into will say, come to L.A., right? Mm -hmm. I got you, whatever. We'll be, a, you know, we'll be an item. Mm -hmm. But he was smart. He said, don't choose L.A. for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, dudes know how to, don't come here for me. If you're going to come, come, but don't mm -hmm. come for me. He didn't mm -hmm. want to make that commitment. How'd you meet him? I met in Richmond, Virginia, when I was working for the governor. He came through on stand-up. This is before the Martin Show, before. Because he's from D.C. He's from D.C. Right. But mm -hmm. I didn't meet I mean, it's funny that we're right there together, mm -hmm. but I never met him that mm -hmm. way. Met him on stand-up tour and went with some friends when he was in Richmond. I think we actually got tickets at the governor's office for, this, for, for him to be there. Always thought he was funny, mm -hmm. right? But it was interesting in watching him do stand-up as, you know, as crazy and so, you know, he'd say anything just... Um, raunchy. It's like, hmm, it's not about him. Mm -hmm. Like, there was just something about him that intrigued me. Mm -hmm. And um, I found myself getting this, like, crush on him from mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. Well, after, after we left out of the concert, I'm walking back with my girlfriend to the car, and one of his, you know, entourage mm -hmm. members said, excuse me, um, but, um, you know, Mr. Lawrence would like to meet you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm 20 what, 21 years old, right. I'm, I'm still, kind of, I'm, and I'm feisty, you know. I'm like, oh, well, he needs to come over and introduce himself, you know, yeah. And so Martin, who is, you know, he, he's feisty too, right. back at that, you know, in the day, he was like, oh, she tripping? Oh, 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 leave her alone. She tripping, she like, she wanted them chicks, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, they talked me and they said, well, you know, it'll be hard for him to get out because everybody will see him, you know, he really wants you to come over. So I went over to the car. We had a little um, bumpy exchange mm -hmm. and 
it was so funny. It stayed bumpy for like the next, like through, through our dating I love it. and through our marriage. Uh -huh. We were always like this, mm -hmm. but there was definitely that competition. A, oh, well, it was not a, I don't know if competition, but we were just both young mm -hmm. and um, it was hard for him to be vulnerable to yeah, love. Yeah, and yeah. for me, I was raised as a Southern girl that, you know, the man chases you, you are the, you, you have to woo her. And mm -hmm. so I was fighting that, mm -hmm. but still having a crush. And were, he you was a daddy, fighting. were you a daddy's girl? Oh, big time. So, I still am. Mm -hmm. I mean, my daddy's 90 and I'm still a daddy's yeah, girl, yeah. you know? So I, I just had this way that I thought he was supposed to approach me. Mm -hmm. He was like, hey, you know, I can get any of these tricks out here. I don't need, I don't need all that. But we ended up connecting that night um, at the after party. His brother, Robert, was actually the one who said, listen, you and my brother been going at it all night. <laughs> y'all, he needs to, you, y'all yeah. need to connect. Yeah, There's yeah. something here. Yeah. And he was like, just give me your number. So I gave him my number and that night Martin called me and we mm -hmm. talked all night long. I love it. So we just started, it started from like a f little feistiness, but really a genuine friendship. Mm -hmm made me laugh mm -hmm. and um, he was he was vulnerable and Martin has a whole nother side of him that people don't see mm -hmm. it's very caring very generous mm -hmm. um, but there was a real special bond mm -hmm. and so of course I'm still in Virginia though he's in LA we're young we were back and forth for for three years mm -hmm. before we actually I moved to LA um, supposedly on my own mm -hmm. and after being there a week he proposed Wow yeah I know it's crazy I know it's crazy. Go ahead, you can say it. I Pat, love what it. What were you thinking? No, no. no. Listen, <laughs> what? What? One week. First of all, that's very seductive. No, it was. It was really like, how do you not go? Like, he was, you know, hey, I need you to meet me at my house. I'm like, what's going on? Don't worry about it. Just come up here now. And I'm like, okay. And I go up. He's, he takes me to the roof, and um, he gets on his knee, and he proposes. Yeah. It's like, you know, you're 22, very you're 23. Very uh, Yeah. It was very romantic, mm -hmm. and this was the guy that for the last three years, even through him getting engaged to somebody else, and I'm dating other people, makeup breakups, and coming together, um, he was the one who really had my heart. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, why not? Like, let's do this. Nine months later, we were married. And then how soon after that did you have your daughter? Um, so we got married in January. I conceived her in April. Mm -hmm. She was born the next January. Mm -hmm. She's now 22 years old. But you're not together. No, we're not together. It didn't work. Um, it's so funny. I, I call it from 18 to 18. So 18 year, 18 months married to Martin. 18 years I've now been married to my my second husband. Wow. Yeah. This is that year. 18 to 18. Hmm. Yeah. And nine and nine is 18 and nine is the number of finality. Ooh. So mm -hmm. you mean it's over? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've already gone around a couple of times. Yeah. Like, oh, Lord. No, no, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I just put that together in my head. I don't have the revelation yet. Give me a few minutes. Me I come back I to you. I need some revelation Let, the, let, the, let the anointing kick in. I get back at you on that. So <laughs> go ahead. I'm be waiting for that. I need you to call me as soon as it hits you. So, yeah. okay. So 18 months after dating mm -hmm. three years, yeah. you now have a baby girl. Yeah. And it was difficult. I mean, we, you know, again, I'm still a Virginia girl at heart. You could take me out of Virginia, but you cannot take the Virginia out of me. And I'm from the southern part, like near North Carolina, so mm -hmm. I'm a southern Virginia girl. Mm -hmm. um, southern values, I lost, just lost my mom again, who was a very powerful force in my life, um, strong voice in my life. There was clearly a void for me. Um, I go on to win Miss Virginia, everything happened so fast. Boom, before you know I'm in L.A., boom, I'm getting married. Everybody's like, whoa, Pat, right? Um, and, and Martin and I, again, it started fiery. and. That was a part of our chemistry. But as we got married, it became very unhealthy in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. um, in many ways. And we loved each other, but we just didn't get along. We'll be back with more Super Power with your host, Dia Direct. Have you ever been in a relationship, personally or professionally, that has failed? And it made you feel lost and discouraged? Well, what if I told you that you can literally leverage every single painful situation and make your pain pay you back? After all, it costs you something. Just like with a bank account, you want to get some interest off of everything that you've been through. All the tears, all the time, all the effort. Make it pay you back. Use it. Leverage it. Check out my Amazon number one bestseller, Failure is Fuel, and experience how my testimony can fuel your life to the next level.
We're back where super fly women testify. It's the Super Power Her Podcast with your host, Dia Durant. It sounds like, I don't know, jaded or whatever, but let's just talk a little bit about love not being enough. Mmm. Yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts about that? Oh, I definitely believe that. Sometimes it's just not enough. I think it's way, it takes so much more when you're talking about who you're going to life partner with. Um, you have to be equally yoked. Mm -hmm. You know, now we both know that. I mean, I, at 22, was not even saved. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I went to church the traditional way. You go on Sundays, okay, that's a good thing. But I didn't have a relationship with the Lord. But that sounds very, you know, churchy. Yeah, it is. So churchy. when you say when you say equally yoked, yes, um, what does that look like and mean to you? That means that you both believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior, mm -hmm. right? You both believe you're committed to knowing that He is our Savior. We're going to live our lives according to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, you got to you got to know the Word. Mm -hmm. At 22, I I could I mean I didn't know the books of the Bible. I didn't realize there were multiple Johns in the Bible. I mean, it's so many stories I could tell you about my um, knowledge mm -hmm. or lack of of mm -hmm. the Word. So. You have, to, you have to know the Word of God. You have to believe it by faith, even though you can't see it. Mm -hmm. um, well, at that time, neither one of us was in that place. And a lot of people, you know, at 22, 23. You don't even know yourself fully. You don't know yourself, because you don't, uh, not everybody, but they're, like my daughter, she's way further ahead than, mm -hmm. I, than mm -hmm. I was. But I made sure of that. Right, was, yeah. I made sure. And so for her, it's a little different. But for me, at 22, I was living my best life. I really was. I wasn't living Christian biblical pra you know, mm -hmm. practices because I didn't know them, mm -hmm. except for what they taught in church. You, you do bad, you go to hell. You do good, you go to heaven. But there was no relationship taught. Mm -hmm. I was from a very traditional church at the time. And so fast forward, I now know that for Martin and I both, we, did not, we, didn't, we didn't establish that on the front end. Mm -hmm. That was not established. We were just two people young and in love. That was it. It was passionate, there was chemistry, and we wanted to be married. We did not look at this as a long-term partnership. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, as I now look back at 47, mm -hmm. there's way more, to it, more, way more to it than just loving somebody. Because mm -hmm. you're gonna love many people in your life. But who are you equally yoked with? You, you, you share the same values, the same principles. Um, do you want to have children? Do you not want to have children? How many children do you want to have? How do you want to live? What do you think about finances? Um, you know, do you believe, you know, okay, you shop, you can travel, or do, are you real big on budgets? There's so, it's those finite things that, that get you in marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, it's those small little things that can make or break. And so, no, I didn't know that stuff at 22. I didn't have enough wisdom mm -hmm. to even know. I was still trying to get to know Pat. I'm, I want to talk to you about getting to know Pat mm -hmm. um, and how you and your self-love, but I just want to chime in and say that a lot of Christians mm -hmm. get together because they have church um, in common. Mm -hmm. and, and, and something that I hear a lot of, of, of um, veteran married people say, and I, I tend to believe it too, is do you like each other? Because mm, you can love good. the Lord, but when and we can shout and praise God and He can mm -hmm. shout out all day long. <laughs> yeah, that's but good. you get on my last nerve. That's good. I don't like you. I don't like you. I don't yeah. like the way you flow. I don't like the way you talk to me. I don't like the way you smell. I don't, I don't think really your, I don't think your jokes are funny. <laughs> oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't, I don't like the way you shaped. Mm -hmm. I don't like your style. Yeah. I don't like you. I don't, I don't like your like family. You. <laughs> I don't like. <laughs> I don't like your kids. <laughs> you got to keep coming up with it because right. I mean, it's real, especially so, with blended families. So today. exactly. And so when we talk about these these Christian principles, mm -hmm. a lot of times, a lot of the, the answers are in the gray and in the details of, yeah. yeah, I love you. We love Jesus. But we don't like each other. We ain't friends. Mm. And if it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't. You know, when I first got saved, to be honest with you, most of my friends who we were holy rollers. Mm -hmm. But if the, if if it had, I was called Wild Dia. If it were, if it <laughs> if it was not Wild for, Dia, I love if it, it was not for Jesus Christ, we wouldn't be friends. Right. They didn't have no style. Mm -hmm. They were corny. I didn't like them. Right. For on 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 the basis of anything other than we love the Lord. Mm. It's a great 
uh, way to be yoked. Right. But when you got to live with somebody, it just ain't enough. No, it's not. And you're absolutely right. And that is one of the things. Um, it's funny. Actually, Martin and I were friends. Mm-hmm. It's a little opposite. We were, we really, I mean, we, we had a good time together. We were friends that just sometimes didn't get along and did not have, did not know how to handle, were not equipped to handle those moments, right? Um, plus, it was just a high pressure time, right? I mean, I'm, I'm new to LA. He was a, right in the middle of his, his career really blowing up. And so there was a lot of, a lot of other dynamics that we had to deal with. But you're absolutely right. It's important to like the person that you're with. And that's, you know, to be honest with you, that's why today, fast forward, Martin and I are still good friends. It's respectful, but and it took years of healing and forgiveness and grace to get there. I bet. But our daughter's 22, and we we don't hang the phone up without saying love you. Mm-hmm. I mean, respectfully. And your husband is good with that. He's cool with it. I mean, he did, I'm not gonna say he's ever said, "Oh, I'm good with that," mm-hmm. but he's heard it, and he hasn't. He hasn't. He's never made a big deal out of it. But it was funny. I was talking to. Um, a young lady that that is, um, she's engaged to, to Martin now, who I just adore. Her name is Roberta. Mm-hmm. And she she said, "Yeah, that was a little strange to me when I first like you you and your ex wife say I love you, but she said, you know what? But now I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. Now once she got to know me, mm-hmm. she was like, I totally get it. So it's not the norm for most people, mm-hmm. but because our relationship really did start as a friendship, we we real we went back to that." We, we, we parent our daughter, but we were friends. Who just graduated? Yeah, just graduated from Duke. Congratulations. So you cannot tell me that good things can't come out of a jacked up situation. Come on now. Like, for real. And that's why I wrote the book Second Chances, because I felt like people sometimes feel like, okay, I've made a mistake. This was awful. I can never come back. And I remember the night that I left with my daughter. It was in the middle of the night. She was nine months old. Mm-hmm. And I felt so bad because mm. my parents had been married for 30 some years till my mom died and my grandparents 60 some years. And I remember thinking as I, as I took her out of the house and I, I took her out of her crib and God told me to pull one suitcase, I pulled one suitcase. You just had a moment of I can't do this anymore. Yeah, it just, it was clear. Yeah. I mean, it was clear like this is it. This mm-hmm. is dangerous, this is no longer healthy mm-hmm. for any of us. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think I was leaving to divorce, I just thought I'm leaving for the safety of all of us in this moment. And were you also hoping to maybe get his attention? Like mm-hmm. for him to see mm-hmm. like, okay. No, it hit me like, yeah. I mean, it's clear God spoke to my heart. Mm-hmm. See, cause we're, and imagine this, we're living in Beverly Hills home. Mm-hmm. Um, Martin of course was at the height of his career in a yeah. lot of ways. He'd done bad boys already and the Martin show was on and things were, you know, he was doing great from a career perspective. We are living in a beautiful home. I'm driving a Jag. I mean, what most people would look at as you are living your your best life, right? They but never we know the miserable. other side. They never know the other side. The inside, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was it was it was ugly. It was rough. It was hard. It was sad. It was dangerous for all of us. And I just remember God saying, "You need to leave." Now, mind you, with all those great things, I signed a prenup. Mm. So I moved out to LA for my career. Within nine months, I'm married. Within a few months, I'm now because I've conceived a child. So you know, I'm not career. Career is gone. Like I, all the things I went out there, you know, I was going to try to be the next Halle Berry and Oprah Winfrey. Like was gone right quickly, and my focus was on, was on family, Martin and, and my daughter. So, but anyway, I signed a prenup. So a lot of people thought, oh, she's. I remember back in the day, she's a gold digger or whatever. Nah. Like, you don't know. You have no idea. I'm married out of love. Mm -hmm. Um, But love is not always enough. Mm. When we come back, Mm. I want to talk about your journey Mm -hmm. to self-love. That's good. So, we're talking to Pat Smith, who is... More than you thought, I bet. Mm -hmm. There's always more than what meets the eye. Yes, that's because there's some transparency Mm -hmm. with this beauty, okay?